Breakups are often the symptom of problems in a relationship. My workbook series, The Knowledge, is focused on helping you change your life in four key areas. Retaining the information that I teach, personal growth, improving your relationships, and of course, reattracting your ex. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about, I discovered I am an avoidant. Uh-oh. I think we should avoid the subject totally. All right. I don't want to deal with it. That's all for this video. That's I'm it. Coach Craig Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> all right. right. So we're making light of it, but we know it's not funny. It's yeah. We're just being a little amusing, we hope. Um, <clears throat> when you're on my channel for any extended period of time, you're going to hear me talking about attachment styles and an avoidant attachment style. And you may have been thinking to yourself, this sounds like me. I'm an avoidant. I didn't even know. I've been doing this my whole life. And probably the first thing you're going to do is beat yourself up. And you're probably going to sit there and say, the relationship fell apart and it's all my fault. Because if I had just given my partner what they needed, they would have stayed. But I don't know what they wanted and it was too much anyway. <laughs> You may have been feeling like that too. Yes, you may have been feeling like that too. Like, I, I don't know what to do. Um, I like this relationship, but I don't know how I feel about relationships in general, and they haven't always worked well for me. Yeah. That's kind of what the avoidant person says. Um, I'm going to tell you a story about a woman named Chloe. Okay? okay. And this is compliments of our new best friend, Susan Johnson, who mm -hmm. I talked about in, in a few videos just earlier. Um, again, what I'm going to say is that if you discover that you have avoidant attachment disorder, again, like with ang anxious attachment disorder, you start by challenging your negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you about Chloe. Okay. Um, Chloe was trained as a child in a classic avoidant way, mm -hmm. in the way that classically makes people avoidant. Help was not available. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we're talking about avoidant, we're talking about little kids who, like all of us little kids, need nurture, reassurance, love, affection, even if we're being silly or whiny or tired and obnoxious. Okay? Mm -hmm. We still need to be loved when we're in those states. Mm -hmm. um, and if you end up avoiding, you find out that help will not be available when you're in those states. Mm -hmm. And love will not be there for you securely and expectedly when you're in those states. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you're told to stop that mushy stuff, stop whining, and go to your room. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, uh, Chloe had two really heavy duty things happen to her when she was a child. Okay. Um, first of all, her parents frequently had vicious fights. Okay. Almost nightly. Now, she was from Chicago, if I recall, and she had several siblings. Mm -hmm. They would wait until the children were in bed and they thought the children were asleep. Um, and then they would have these vicious fights that the kids were always terrified would turn violent. Allegedly they never did, but it's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. But this would be nightly. So here are kids going to bed looking for some peace and quiet and it wouldn't happen. So the children would get out of bed and they would sneak very stealthily to as close to the living room as they could get yeah. to hear what the parents were saying and to be sure nobody was getting hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay? And finally yeah, when the... They must be scared. Oh, scared to death, yeah. of course. Of course. And then they would, when it, things subsided, they would go back to their room and sleep for the rest of the night. No one ever mentioned it. No word was ever put to it. And the kids would um, interact the next morning by looking at each other. Like. Oh, mom's still here. Yeah, dad's, and dad's still, still here. here. Yeah, yeah, we got this far, but See not, you a word, not a word. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other thing that happened to her was that the the boy next door, who was a little older than she, invited her over one afternoon to show him show her what he had in his garage. You may already have guessed what he had in his garage, and he molested her as often as he could, 
several times every week if he could, uh, every afternoon for as long as she was growing up. Wow. Okay. But did she ask for help? Of course not. Her parents couldn't manage each other and daily life, never mind trying to help her with this. Mm -hmm. And she probably thought that any additional stress, the family might break Absolutely up. Absolutely right. So she couldn't risk it. So she learned to bear all of this craziness and, and her own abuse, really, without saying a word to anyone. Yep. And just avoided close relationships. Fortunately for her, she was extremely bright and did extremely well professionally. Now that was a real break for her. Yeah. And she traveled in professional um, circles and met many people, but very carefully never became friends with any of them. Mm -hmm. She was married twice to men who cheated on her and were abusive to her. And do you think she ever said anything? No. Because she learned early on, you can't have feelings of being, being vulnerable and asking for help. You could push the whole apple cart over the edge. You got it, Craig. She was afraid the family would break up yeah. and that it wouldn't be able to bear her having any needs that were legitimate and more than legitimate. Yeah. Um, she needed help and she needed some kind of nurture as all those kids did. So you got to realize that it was a way of coping. Right. Okay? Yes. Obviously, it wasn't the healthiest thing to do. But when you're, when you gotta survive, what choices did she have, really, uh, except to suppress those feelings? I can't be vulnerable. It won't be safe, and I can't need anything, or I will push my caretakers further away. Mm -hmm. That's the real thing that gets you about avoiding. You're gonna push your caretakers away. Um, and Susan Johnson gave us a great example of her avoidant uncle, um, who when she was had wrecked up her teddy bear, if you happen to have seen that one. She wrecked up her teddy bear and went to her grump, grumpy uncle to say she was upset about that. And he said, stop this mushy stuff and go to your room. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember also I had another client that I worked with for a long time who also had been professionally very successful. But she had a vivid memory. She had allergies and asthma as a very young child. And at some point, due to all of that, she lost her hearing and her ears hurt. And she remembered going to her mother one day and trying to point and trying to say, my ears hurt. And her mother said, you have too many needs. I can't manage you. Go to your room. Wow. Would you ever ask for help again? And why would you trust anyone? Why would you trust anyone? When this is the person right. that's supposed to take care of you the most in this world. So avoidant people, and I've had several questions from people who have avoidant partners. Should I give up? Can they ever change? And it's the same answer you get to all of the rest of it, depending on how willing they are to work at it and how willing you are to work with them at it. That's right. And it will have to be slowly if they're avoidant because they'll be terrified if you get too close too fast. Yes. But yes, even that can come around. Um, but they'll have to challenge the negative self-talk of, I don't dare have any feelings. I don't dare have any feelings about what happened to me. I can't ask anybody for comfort because I'll just push them away further. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what's an avoidant to do when they get in a relationship? Um, and then they're often accused of not being sensitive and not tuned in to the other person, etc. Because they have to tune out a lot of the times because that's too difficult. Right. It's too hard for them that's to, right. fit, to sit and feel close. That's right. Right? right? So if if you have an anxious attachment style and you're trying to date an avoidant, you have to understand that it's going to be a struggle for them to try and be as engaged as you are. As you would like. Absolutely right. And it, we, we co often come across that combination, mm -hmm. um, anxious versus avoidant. And it's very difficult for both sides. The anxious party wants more and more contact and the avoidant party wants it on one level, but is still pretty scared. So if you have an avoidant partner that you really care about, move slowly. Yes. And if you are avoidant, immediately attack those messages that you got as a little one and probably still get mm -hmm. from your self-talk. Yeah. Be careful. Don't get involved. Don't get attached. Don't You'll trust be, them. No, don't trust them. Yeah, you'll be disappointed. And if you let them know how you really feel, you'll push them away.
You know, sometimes you may have even heard things like, you can't trust men. Right. Oh, or, yes, all the, all the generalizations, or you can't trust women, I've yep. heard that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard that too. Um, so, nothing is unfixable, but it's a lot of work. Okay? Yeah. But it can be done. And for those of you out there that have an avoidant attachment style, you know, the first step is awareness. awareness. Oh, and the more you become aware of the issue, or think about it, talk about it, deal with it, the more likely you're going to be able to change and improve yourself. And, you know, realize that you did this to survive. That's right. Okay? This wasn't like you decided to be like this because you wanted to push people away. No, so-and-so is a loner. He just never gets hooked up with anybody. So-and-so didn't choose that, nor is it so-and-so's fault. Yeah. yeah. So-and-so was probably physically, emotionally, yeah. sexually abused. Something happened, yeah. Because you don't just become avoidant for no reason, right? No. And if you feel you have no one to turn to, I mean, that's a terrible feeling for anyone, okay? And that's how the avoidant has felt. Because how can you trust? You can't. It's very, very hard to trust anybody if you couldn't trust your parents, right? Right. right exactly. Um, so very, very slowly, if you're the partner of an avoidant. Yep. Absolutely. And continue to just work on yourself. Talk about it. Get yourself a local therapist. Uh, if you want to do Skypes with Margaret and I, we're here for that we're too. Here. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can work through that and work on yourself. And in time, you can change and you can, can become healthier, right? And you can become more secure. Right. But anyway, Chloe, one day, <clears throat> was sitting by herself after being on a vacation, alone, of course, um, watching TV. And it suddenly occurred to her for the first time, she wished there was somebody there watching TV with her. And for her, that was an enormous breakthrough. Wow. Okay? Because she finally realized she would like to have somebody. Yep. Yeah. So hopefully some of you avoidance out there will think about that and think about, you know, the pros and the cons that come with being in a relationship because, you know, there are difficult aspects of being in a relationship Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to trust and you have to become vulnerable. Yeah. And no matter what your attachment style is, becoming vulnerable by letting people really know you. Uh, because half the world has a fear that if people really knew them, they wouldn't like them. And that's not true. Yeah. And you have to remind yourself of that. Absolutely. And it's not your fault. No, it is definitely not your fault. And, you know, those secure people get all the goodies, you know. Everything's easy for them. Um, <laughs> but just remember, being anxious or avoidant is not your fault. No, it's not. So, stop beating yourself up. Please. It's not going to help you. No. It's not going to change things either. Okay? Okay. All right. So, if you liked this video and the work Margaret did, put a like on there for her. Oh, please. Yes. <laughs> um, if you want my help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. You could do email coaching with me. You could do Skype coaching with me. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Yes, pl please feel free to sign up. I'm delighted to speak with you. Just click on Margaret on the top of my website to do that. You can add me on Instagram if you want. Uh, that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net.